Hey there, everyone. Kevin Creighton with Shooting Illustrated. This week on Shooting Illustrated Interviews, we're talking with Larry Correa. Now, if you go into your local bookstore, assuming you have a local bookstore, let's face it, and you go up into the science fiction and fantasy section, you're probably going to see at least one entire shelf devoted to Larry's works. Larry's a very prolific author, very good author. He's also a big fan of the Second Amendment and has a long history of firearms and is a heck of a shooter himself, by the way. So we're going to talk with him a little bit here about how to maybe talk to your friends about guns, how to move the needle on the Second Amendment back and forth, and how to get people more involved in taking responsibility for their personal safety. Larry, thank you so much. Really appreciate oh, you being a here. Pleasure. Thanks, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Thank you. Now, you know, your your history, you and I are trying to come lately to the firearms uh, movement. You've been around, you know, for many years. It predates, your, it predates you being a writer. Uh, yeah. So actually, my the very first things I ever, the first works of fiction I ever wrote were on the old internet gun forums uh, yeah. back in the olden days. And back the when first, you had to, you know, strangle a robot to get online. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Back in the modem days. And uh, yeah. I actually, back in college, got into that. And then um, the first... Uh, paying writing I ever did was actually for gun magazines. I did product reviews uh, for different gun magazines, and uh, that's how I got started. I've always been a uh, Second Amendment guy. Uh, uh, I've been a gun rights guy. I was a I was a concealed weapons instructor for a long time. I owned a gun store. I did that for many years. Uh, I was an SOT, so I did machine gun stuff. That was a lot of fun. And so I was uh, actually a big gun guy before I wrote my first book, and my first book was actually aimed at uh, our people. And I sold it on those. I self-published it, my original first one. And I uh, I sold it primarily on places like the high road and the firing line uh, many, many, around. many years ago. Yeah, yeah, I'm dating around, myself dude. now. Yeah, yeah, those <laughs> were. That was fun. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was um, it was an example just of how strong, how deep the roots of gun culture really go. You know, you don't necessarily see it in the main, like there are more gun owners than our golfers in America, you know, but nobody talks about, you know, the good time that they had at the range last week, you know, on, on, uh, on a talk show, you know, we need to, we need to start talking about that in terms of guns. As our friend, David Yamani says, guns are normal, normal people own guns, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. What's been your experience of that? How have you managed to get people, you know, to bring up the subject of the second amendment in a way that can relate to people? Well, well, for me coming at it, I mean, I'm writing action adventure, fantasy novels and sci-fi novels, but I always try to maintain kind of a theme of self-defense as a human right. And uh, I, I've normalized guns uh, and I'm a mainstream author. I'm rather popular. I'm a, I'm a New York Times bestseller. So, I mean, regular people who aren't from the gun culture read my books, but I always try to gun nut them up a little bit and uh, you know, right. make this stuff interesting and fun and intriguing and cool because a lot of people enjoy this stuff and they don't realize that shooting isn't just a practical thing for self-defense, but it's also fun. Mm -hmm. um, and I try to accentuate the, the fun part of that. And also, you know, obviously it's really cool for action sequences and blowing monsters up and shooting space aliens and whatnot. Uh, yeah. And I try to be really technically proficient and keep my my skills up and my knowledge up so my fans don't get, you know, they don't get offended when I get stuff wrong. But for regular people, um, those themes of, of self-protection and being able to step up and defend yourself and defend your family, those are universal human truths. Uh, and so when they read that in their fiction, that resonates with them. Uh, and so that's kind of like my personal crusade that I've been on for the last couple of decades. <laughs> yeah, yeah, trying to yeah. try to normalize that stuff out there. Yeah, you know, uh, I have I have friends from all across the political spectrum, and one thing that's absolutely sure with all of them that is that the um, you've got the uh, just about everybody. I mean, unless you're talking actual, honest to goodness pacifists who will not lift a finger to defend their lives and doesn't believe in violence in any way, everybody at some point says, "I am willing to defend this with my life, my family, myself." something and that's at some point it's going to happen most people aren't willing to understand that you know they're going to have to might be had the one to do it themselves and not offload that to you know a, a policeman or something like that but getting that realization at some point that they're going to be that their own first responder i think is 
you know, such a big, big win for us. And, and anything we can do to, uh, you know, to uh, kind of move that uh, uh, the needle, I think, is a good thing. Yeah. Well, one of my, like, my personal things on that is, and you bring up a great point, because like Hollywood and Manhattan Publishing, they, they love guns in their books mm -hmm. and their movies. But it's almost always in the hands of somebody professional. Um, and they delegate that out to, you know, it's okay for uh, John John Wick or Jack Reacher to have a gun because they know what they're doing and you're just a regular schlub. I like to take regular schlubs, us regular normal human people, and put them in these dynamic situations. Um, you know, I, I like to write about, you know, the bad mamma jammas and the tough guys and the professionals too. But I like being able to take a mom at home and like, and she can bust out a shotgun and, and blow away the werewolf that's trying to get away, you know, trying to get in. And that's what I do. Uh, yeah. I like taking the normal people and giving them opportunities because that's what life is. And if you, I mean, I, me and you guys like us, we know the stats, we know how often it is for regular people to defend themselves from evil. It's super common, but it's not in our entertainment. Uh, in our entertainment products, it's almost always if a regular person uses a gun to try to defend themselves from the bad guys, they get hurt or yeah. they screw up. But that's not or, actually how yeah. real life works. Yeah, or it's, it's um, you know, the consequences of their actions are going to haunt them for the rest of their lives and, you know, all the rest of that. And it's really, you know, not, you know, like that was nice little lady. Now leave it to the professionals, you know. It's not, you know, it's not how life works, but, you know, you bring up John Wick, and I don't think we as a gun culture have realized the impact that those movies have had on the gun culture. You know, having Tiana Reeves, that one video that's out here of him just absolutely shredding, uh, you know, Taron Butler's uh, practice range and watching the, the the next level gun, gun foo, for want of a better word. Yep. That, that were showing up in those movies has really affected a lot of people. People are like, oh, wow, you know, that, that, that's, a, that's a touchstone that goes across outside of gun culture. Once we take them to the gun range, we win. Absolutely. That's, that's the biggest key is uh, getting people out and trying the stuff and removing the stigma and the mystery. Um, because the way our culture is set up uh, predominantly for the last couple of decades has been overwhelmingly showing gun ownership as a negative, as a weird thing. Is it something that weird, paranoid people do? You know, and it's not, it's not the case at all. It's, it's normal. It's mainstream. And it's honestly, the, it's the people who are scared to death of this stuff that are the weird ones. And so yeah. I think it's been great in the last generation. Really, we have pushed back against that really hard. And I think as a society and as a culture, we've made some real gains in, uh, in, in kind of normalizing uh, what is a totally normal thing. And I think yeah. that's wonderful. You know, part of that's been a reaction to, to world events, you know, quite frankly, and I, I totally get that. Um, part of it is, you know, people are looking for entertainment and going to the gun, going to the range and shooting stuff is fun. It just is. There's just no way other, no other way around it. Um, you know, um, I know recently you've been asked, uh, you know, uh, earlier this year, you were, uh, you got a book come out that, you know, talks about this, that talks about defending the Second Amendment in a way that isn't scholarly it isn't you know uh, more i wouldn't say what's the word like not not fear driven but positive driven you know i yeah. mean fear is a great motivator and let's face it you know the number one reason why people are buying guns these days is for personal protection that's fear but it's not the only motivator that's out there yep uh, so the book is called in defense of the second amendment and it's the uh, first thing i've ever written or the first book i've written that's nonfiction. um and it's a topic i've been passionate about for 30 years so the publishing house approached me about we wanted a kind of a handy guide for regular people who want to defend the Second Amendment or they're interested in learning about it. And I wrote this book and I love it. And I put a lot of heart and soul into it because it's a, like I said, a topic I've been studying for most of my life. And uh, it's been a lot of fun because I, I wanted to come at it in a way that it wasn't academic. It wasn't a policy wonk discussion. Yeah. It wasn't a... I mean, there's a lot of stats in there. I've got like 16 pages of small print citations. I mean, I cite everything. And they had a team of lawyers go over it to make sure I didn't have anything wrong. Um, so I, I did my homework on this. But really, I, I come at it at the angle of why, why do we have guns? Why is gun control stupid? Why is gun control doomed to fail every time? I, I go through every single argument the other side makes uh, because we've all heard them over and over and over, over again. And over, yep, yep, it's yep. very repetitive. And I, I, I just debunk all of them. And then I go into the positives of why do you really want a gun? Why are AR-15s great? <laughs> yeah. You know, 
what is the true purpose of the Second Amendment? Why did the founding fathers put that in there? And I go into the logistics of why it's still effective this, to this day. And uh, at the end, I go through kind of like, um, now that you're into this, like, like how how do you help? How do you move the ball forward? How 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 can you kind of be? I hate the word, but an a, an activist, you know? Yeah, yeah, to, you know, to, it's, to move the needle. Right, you know, it's 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 well, it's all well and good, you know, for for you and I to talk about these things and to enjoy the the rights that we have. But the fact matters, we're not passing that on down to the next generation. They're going to end with us, you know. Each uh, I forget who said it, but you know, each country is, uh, any society is one generation away from tyranny or words to that effect, you know? Um, and that's something we need to look at, you know, the, that that's the good news. I think the, the good news about this is, is that we're seeing more and more, uh, it's not just the people, you know, uh, gun culture is no longer people, you know, who, you know, have this color hair and, you know, or maybe, no, no you know, hair. <laughs> yeah, or no hair and maybe carrying around a little bit too, too many pounds around our midsection, you know? Um, we're seeing so many different people all across the place. I just took a class, you know, uh, uh, you know, Tiffany from uh, Range Master and, you know, um, uh, Laurel Anderson and other people who are really opening up guns. Our good friend, Annette Evans, and all these different people from all different walks of life are understanding that more than any other part of society, minorities benefit from gun from open gun rights than just about anything because they're not the ones in, you know, they're not the ones in charge they're the ones that need that type of defense it's it's been fascinating to me like i said i've been doing this for such a long time that when i first got and i talked about this in the, in, in the book um when i first got involved in this it was a little it was a lot more insular culture it was a lot more um old school country club we, we like to joke about you know the old guy pickup truck yeah you know, it was kind of snobby and you either came up around it, it, was, it was a reverse snob. It's like, you know, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. You, you, you know, you, you drive, you drove up here with a, they knew pickup truck. Well, then we're not going to talk to you. It has to be at least five years old. You know, yeah, yeah. we don't need none of them city stickers around here, you know, and I am a country boy, but honestly, but over the years I've been doing this, I watched, I've watched it expand so dramatically. And, and now depending on where you are in America, you can go to a range and it's just, just this cross section of every type of person and every group you can think of, and and nobody cares because we're there. We're all gun people, and we're shooting, right. and we're having a great time. Uh, I, and you mentioned Annette. I've I've taken several classes with Annette, and she's a hoot. Um, but the last class I took with Annette was taught by Melody Lauer, and she's a yes, tiny, tiny Mel- petite, yeah, little woman. And uh, and, and she a teaches great classes. Great instructor. Oh, she's she's honestly the best diagnostic pistol instructor I've ever worked with in my life. She she's like it's like she can watch you and tell you exactly what muscle you are using wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's fantastic. Um, it's such, but, yeah, but it's yeah, such a leveler. Yeah. But you go to these classes now and it's, it's just fascinating to me because it's like the cross section of humanity. It's not a bunch of burly lumberjack looking guys or, or dude, bro, vet, bro, spe- you know, I, you know, I, I used to be a Navy seal, green Bray, whatever. It's just people. It's just mm-hmm. humanity. And and they're out there, and we're all learning together, and we're shooting, and we're competing, and we're 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 you're coin chasing and going for our range Pokemon, you know. We're, yeah. We're yeah. we're out there having a good time, and I I think it's fantastic, and it's the way it's changed over the last twenty years is amazing to me. I love it. Yeah. It, it's you know we don't really care. You know it's like okay you're this color you can do this you do that. Can you shoot? Yeah. You know that that's all that matters. You know when Chris Chang you know. Um, uh, announced the world, you know, his preferences and stuff like that. The universal reaction from everybody I knew in the, uh, in the gun culture was he can shoot. I don't care. Dude, shoot's good. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, it's honestly, it's like, it's the main thing is like when you get to, when you get with a group of people and, and it's all, and I talked about this in the book, there's always these memes that go around the internet from the anti-gun people because they don't understand us. We, we understand them. And a lot of us, we, we were them when, when we were younger, Sure. but we, we see these memes and it's like, why does this picture offend you? And why is this picture? Okay. And they'll have like a white family with guns and they'll have a black family with guns. The thing is, I have never seen anybody offended by the second picture. Yeah, the only thing like, I've ever cool. seen is people will complain about trigger discipline or lack of eye protection. <laughs> and, and, and that's, you know, that's been my experience too. It's like, Oh, why is this, you know, why is this, why are you offended by this? I'm like, I'm offended by the fact that you've got your finger on the trigger. You know, other than that, I don't, and, and it could be on either side of the picture. I don't care. 
Yeah. Are you safe with your guns? Can you shoot? There. That's all I care about. Give me five minutes with that kid. I'll get him squared away, and yeah. and we're good to go. Honestly, yeah, it, no. it, it's it's I love it. I I the the last generation of gun people who have come up has. They've really because I, one of the things I, I I just harp on in the book is the Second Amendment's for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, I can disagree with somebody on literally every other topic in the world, and we'll fight it out, and we'll argue, and we'll debate, and we might not even stand each other. But if you are on my team and you want to say that guns are good and the Second Amendment is for everyone, and that you know our rights should be protected and we can own this stuff, and you shouldn't try to take it from us, we're 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 simpatico on that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I see that all the time here as I live in Florida and um, the Cuban community here are fiercely defending the Second Amendment. I mean, they are the number one people I see at the at the club matches here. You know, they are because they've had experience. They've seen what happens when tyranny takes over and your right to defend yourself um uh, goes away they're like nope not happening here you know um seeing the same thing now in the jewish community here you know a lot of people like going oh okay i need yeah. to get some training you know um there, there's this terrible realization that a lot of people come to at some point of their life and some of us some of us are born into it we grow up this way others we learn you're pretty much there's going to be a situation where you're on your own you're in. um they 2020 was a huge year for a lot of people for a lot of reasons, but when the riots consumed so many cities around America and police departments were getting called and they're like, well, we can't come. Good luck. Yeah. Or we're going, or the police departments got called for being defunded. Yep. Yeah. You know, you go, okay. Hmm." Yeah. Well, they're burning down the police precincts in Minneapolis. And if you're a regular person, uh, good luck. Yeah. No one's coming to save you. It's you and your friends and family that are nearby and what you have right now. And your uh, skill, but, you, your skill that you have at that moment. And that's, 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 I think the biggest difference that people need to understand, you know, that, you know, that old quote from Jeff Cooper, that owning a guitar doesn't make you a guitarist. Yep. You know, uh, yeah. you know, you're, you're a big fan of training. I've seen you shoot. I mean, uh, what are you up to with fast now? Like five seconds? Uh, I have broken a five second fast a bunch of times now, but I haven't I haven't taken Ernie Langdon's class to go for the coin yet. The fast drill, in case you guys don't know, it's um, from the holster, two shots to a small box about that big, reload, and then four shots to a larger circle, and uh, it's a heck of a drill. Uh, it tests a lot of things really quickly. Five seconds under five is blazingly fast. Um, my best day I can do under eight and that's after, you know, three Red Bulls, you know, so it, yeah. it's, uh, that's, that's the heck. So we're not talking about somebody here who's got a passing interest in the second <laughs> amendment here. We're talking about somebody who puts his words into action and sends lead down yeah. range. I do shoot yeah. a lot. I, I actually, um, I, I just got a light pin from Gabe White. Uh, I earned my light pin, missed my turbo. I, uh, I, I, I choked, I choked a little bit on the draw stroke. I <laughs> couldn't yeah. quite get there. And again, but, that's another for the people who don't know, Gabe's wife's Gabe White's class is one of the most technically demanding classes that are out there. It's all about the, the raw ability to press the trigger, see the sights hit the target. It's not necessarily it's not the class you want to teach if you don't want to, have to do you know movement through a structure or something like that. If you want the raw ability to hit the target with the pistol, Gabe White. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, so I I am that guy that uh I, I I used to shoot a lot of competition when I was younger, but when I became a writer, that kind of killed my time availability. So what I do now is I have my own range at my house. So I shoot quite a bit and I train a lot. And then I, I take a couple classes a year. I like to try to test myself and keep my skills up. Um, I'm primarily a pistol guy, but I love rifles and shotguns as well. I, I'm, I really love shotguns. I'll be honest. I'm a shotgun nerd. I, I, yeah, me, me too. I got to be honest, you know. They are fun. You know, I, I, you've done a Matt Hot class. I haven't yet. Oh, um, super fun. Highly recommended. Yeah, I've, I've done I've done I've done Gibbons class, which, you know, Tom Gibbons class, which takes a lot from from Matt and stuff like that. You know, and, and that one yet. you know, we're talking about this thing. I think it's one thing for people to understand is that when we're talking about firearms training. In a way, what we're talking about is the American martial art. 
you know, the same uh, reasons why the martial arts got invented in Okinawa and, and, and in China were protecting people from against bandits and the war, the, the, the government wasn't protecting them. Uh, hello, you know, as that same sort of thing that we've got going on here in America right now. So somebody who owned a pair of nunchucks would say that they're trained with a nunchuck. I mean, if you've ever owned a pair, you've hit yourself in the back of the head at least once. <laughs> yeah. You're laughing because you know you have to. I <laughs> You know, so it's that sort of thing of attitude of, you know, just owning the good isn't enough to provide the protection. There has to be the skill set that goes along. That's why we're such big fans of training here at Shooting Illustrated. I know you're a big fan of training. It's it's really on everybody's um, shoulders to not just own a firearm, but to keep and bear arms means to be able to bear them competently. You know, the well-regulated militia means that well-regulated part means, you know, what you're doing with the gun. So, I mean, opportunities to train are out there everywhere. There's, so we, we live in a golden age of really high quality instruction. We really do. Um, some, some places it's harder than others, depending on where you live, just your access to places to shoot. I mean, obviously in shooting is costly. So I'm a huge fan of dry fire. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we talked about Annette Evans earlier. I always recommend Annette's book, the dry fire primer. It's like it's five bucks good. on Amazon. Uh, and I'll teach you guys all the safe ways and drills to, to dry fire at home for, for cheap. And yep. I, I'm a huge fan of that. So get out there yep. and train guys. Yeah, it absolutely, you know, and, and the fact of the matter is we have these benefits because we use them. Um, you know, we have the second amendment because we're competent with the second amendment because we're not being, we are responsible gun owners. Part of the responsibility being a responsible gun owners, knowing what you're doing and that doesn't, we're not born with that. I mean, all guys, all guys are born thinking that they know how to, you know, change the oil in a car, hook up a stereo, and shoot. Um, I have some bad news for those people. You know. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, we've uh, we've all we've all known that guy where I grew up around. I I grew up around guns. Makes you an unassailable expert. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know. Do it. You know. For me, you know, I'm like, okay, great. Pick up your gun, go to Loretti, give me five rounds, five yards, five seconds to a five inch circle. Ready, go. And uh, then 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 the excuses happen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, stuff My like sights that. must be off. My sights are <laughs> off. Yeah, no, I'm, you know, yeah, okay. And then I pick up the gun and I put them all through a one inch circle. Like, nope, that's not it. That's um, actually how <laughs> I learned to be a really good, like, um, group shooter was back when I was teaching basic CCW. Because every class I'd have one person who'd be like, my sights are off. And I, I would have to take whatever strange gun it was and shoot the prettiest group I humanly could yeah. to uh, to break through to them that nope yeah you, you need to you need to like pay attention. <laughs> it's it's this little you know this is the little thing that's the problem not 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 the little things on top of the, the gun yeah yeah so I had to learn how to shoot a lot of really weird guns with really <sighs> weird triggers. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, some of them are cool. I've had some, you know, students like, "Wow, uh, Smith and Wesson Sigma 380. I haven't seen that in years. It's like, cool, you know." Or old uh, had somebody bring in an old uh, another Smith and Wesson, an old uh, uh, 686 from like, you know, the Nixon administration. That was just, or, well, I don't know if it was 686. It was a 38 revolver. I forget what it was, but it was just gorgeous. I'm like, man, so that's one nice thing about living in Florida. You do get to see a lot of wonderful old guns. That's awesome. You know, yeah. Cool. Now, uh, Larry, the book again, uh, In Defense of the Second Amendment. In Defense uh, of the Second Amendment, it's just from regular republishing. It's uh, at bookstores everywhere. And also there's an audio book uh, version. Mm -hmm. It's on audible.com uh, if, if people like the audio books. And uh, ebook is out there as well. So I hope people enjoy it. Yeah. you know, And, and if you're looking for something to maybe give you the, um, the intellectual firepower to talk to somebody and they're not maybe move the needle right away. But at least getting started to think about it, getting to the point where they're willing to go to the range and shoot some 22s and just have some fun, that might be something you want to look at, you know, because it's a universal human right. And it's time we start acting like it. It's time we start bringing the benefits of safe gun ownership to everybody. You know, it's it's not just here. It's it's the whole the whole shebang. Everybody deserves to have the right to keep and bear arms. All right. Larry, I want to thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Oh, and pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Oh, my, you know, anytime, anytime. And hey, guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. And please visit shootingillustrator.com for more information on how to keep and bear arms.